put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. Time Cop Movie Viewing. In spite of this being part of the collection, I probably will not review any other film on it. Time Cop and Moon 44, if I recall, are the only ones that are particularly competently made. And the rest, they're kind of the type of B-movie that promises something in the concept and our title, but they have so little money and, you know, not much in the way of effects and such, so it's mostly just people moving towards it or describing it while it's off screen and the acting and writing aren't good enough to sustain that so yeah with good moving on to the plot of this one Jean-Claude Van Damme plays Walker and every time I hear his name in the film I want to add Texas Ranger his wife dies in 94 when he is a cop just joining the TEC, the Time Enforcement something or other that begins with a C. In 2004, he is a U.S. federal agent still working at the TEC and more involved in fighting time travel based crime. And he tracks Senator McComb, who's political career is unusually successful and this film definitely thinks it's more clever than it actually is going off last minute notes again Jean-Claude's hero status is established early by him literally getting an old lady's purse back for her and this, it's it's fun to look at this film and see how much has changed in in this film. You know when when Senator McComb says he's like running for president, you know the moment that that occurs is like oh, okay, how close to the actual race is it? Because today it's like everybody knows that that you know politician is running for president but he's not announcing it until like way into it and then it surprises absolutely no one there is a someone talks about time travel explains it saying that if a certain thing was done in the past then Iraq may have ended up with the first nuke, which is supremely ironic considering the outcome of the, you know, I would say U.S., but really Western invasion of Iraq and WMDs and, yeah. The, the various time periods this goes to are actually fairly well realized. They, they really feel consistent, realistic. And this also, one of the time periods that is used is 1929, where someone goes back and tries to use the stock market crash to buy for cheap some stocks that are really going to skyrocket in the future. And that again, you know, thinking of someone taking advantage of a financial crisis is also a bittersweet piece of, you know, writing, yeah. And there's a dartboard where a presidential candidate is the target, which also is, is interesting in light of more recent, yeah. And the, <laughs> and this, this talks about how if you have enough money, you are, you know, you have a much better chance of becoming president. So 
yeah, they, they, they were right on that one. The dialogue can be pretty stock, and to an extent the characters as well, but there are some good, there's, there's this nice kind of male bonding going on between Walker and the director of the TEC, and yeah, it's, it's nicely done. Good, you know, chemistry, writing, acting, all works pretty well, pretty well. This is one of the films that predicted POV porn now and they actually the there's some news program that talks about the how how the white supremacist party has gotten enough money to be in the running for the you know and again i mean they predicted the direction of the republican party so now the action can be fun, although, as others have noted, it's uh, it's kind of, you know, repetitive. It's basically almost every action scene. The setup is that Jean-Claude Van Damme is on his own against several people, and usually they'll have guns, and he'll at least start out without his gun, or at least his gun drawn. And, you know, he's often surprised by the, you know, when they show up and are ready to fight him. Now, something that's really confusing in this is that everyone at the TEC acts like time can't have been changed. Like, Walker will be back and he'll be talking about someone who apparently was never actually hired to work there or something. And they're all like, are you crazy? And it's like... It's part of your, part of the reason that the TEC exists is to prevent that the future or present will be changed by someone going into the past. The moment that someone returns from the past and says that things, you know, things are different than he remembers them before he traveled into the past, they should immediately say, okay, something must have been changed, let's try to map it out. But each time it's like, what are you talking about? I don't know that person, and do we even know each other? It's just, yeah, really strange. Now, there's this kind of mm, little element of where a female character mentions that she was with a guy called Bobby Morgan, I believe is the name, and there's this thing of Jean-Claude Walker keeps, you know, he'll like say, you know, oh, you know, give him a chance or there's, and I appreciate this kind of, well, you know, you never know, sometimes things can be fixed, but yeah, this, this idea that of oh, you woman, you just, give this man another chance, you know, without really even knowing the guy. It's like, I'm sure he can be better, and you're just, you're being too hard on him. It just, yeah. The movie is 90 minutes, not counting the end credits, and 94 if you do count them. Now, apparently, I didn't actually realize this, which... Yeah, the, the director of this, Peter Hyams, is, you know, apparently known for a trademark of his where a minor character of his can be indicated yelling, This is Sparta! Although, apparently, in this one it's more like Spota, or it's, uh, yeah, anyway. <sighs> the acting is a bit hit and miss, but the main villain is a lot of fun. It's, I think the actor's name is Ron Silver, and among other things, as others have mentioned, when he goes back in time, he like yells at his younger self, it's like, lay off the candy bars, and ah, I thought I had more guts than this, and stuff, it's, it's, it's fun. And they did cast, you know, with, with this sort of thing, it's always like, you know, 
hit and miss with, with casting, they found a guy who, or two guys rather, that look pretty alike. You could believe that these are, you know, the same guy 10 years apart. And I'm pretty sure they're not actually related since that's one way that sometimes, you know, that issue is solved. This is, you know, been called one of Jean-Claude Van Damme's best, and yeah, that's that's mostly true. And Peter Hyams also directed Jean-Claude Van Damme in Sudden Death, which you may have heard of. I think the cinema's not, you know, Brad Jones recently mentioned it, and yes, I can confirm Jean-Claude stars as a former fireman. It's, it's a die-hard film. Jean-Claude is a former fireman. He's taking on terrorists. The vice president is a hostage of these you know, terrorists. And it's all taking place in this hockey stadium. And at one point, Jean-Claude fights a goon wearing a penguin mascot suit in a kitchen. And it's like, you know, throwing him onto, like, you know, using, like, there, there are pots with boiling, you know, water and, and there's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's memorable, if, if nothing else, and, you know, he, he also directed Arnie in End of Days, which is distinctly non-Arnie of a film, and the, This is pretty well paced. It moves along pretty nicely. And it's well produced. I don't really remember the sequel, but what I do remember is I'm almost certain that it's worse than this. There's one thing that I remember is that when the guy goes back in time, then comes back to the present, one of the differences is that one of the guys now has an eye patch. Yeah. To, to, for comparison, in this one, one character goes from being kind of, you know, just... He looks a little lazy, doesn't necessarily take real good care of himself, maybe he's, you know, long hair, and, you know, he looks kind of, I don't know, former hippie kind of thing. And one of the other versions of him, it's just this real nice clean-cut guy with like, you know, the, the hair nicely arranged and, and like, you know, proper glasses and such. That's how you do it. That's nice and, you know, you notice it, but it's not like, you know, completely outlandish. Yeah. Now, this has some plot holes and the time travel is fun, albeit not all consistent as others have mentioned, though I've also read in at least one review that it throws logic out the window in the last third. I don't really see that. I don't really know what they were referring to. As far as I could tell, it still basically followed the rules that were set up. And it certainly wasn't any more inconsistent than earlier on. Now, this is very much a B-movie. A number of the, you know, time travel things and such are a bit on the obvious side. And... Yeah, this is kind of a Terminator light. Now, there are some similarities between this and Back to the Future. The time travel machine, which gets a nice reveal. Like, you know, this is well produced. You can see that money and talent is behind this. Although, you know, Peter Himes, it's only so much town, you know, it, it gets filmed well and such and such, but yeah, I've watched a bunch of his movies and they're just, yeah, they're, they're okay, but yeah, but yeah, the, the reveal is nice on the time travel machine and basically it's, it looks like a rocket ship pod kind of thing, like you might expect, you might expect it to be the top of one of those space exploration rockets or something and it drives in a f straight line and when and you know before it hits anything in front of it it you know moves in time and yeah so you can probably see now but but yeah Peter Himes 
also, you know, he directs and he's his own DP. Now, as others have mentioned, it's kind of, we, we've seen it before, and this is pretty violent. And at one point, Jean-Claude does do a, the, the split across two kitchen counters, which is impressive. And the ending is really cheesy. And he does sport a magnificent mullet for most of this. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.